Okay, well, I don't have video yet, but I also don't have a lot of time, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll start quickly. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we have a beautiful uh, cloudless day today in Geelong, and uh, I have to say I do like cloudless. Um, <laughs> not because the cloud isn't great and everything, and I think there's a lot of potential out there, but because the non-cloud, the data centers that Stephen was just talking about, um, they're still the place where you know, I can go and I can find Unix and Unix tools and Unix principles put to use. Whereas it's my impression that the cloud as we know it nowadays is sort of this massive mess of not invented here syndrome and everybody cooks their own thing. And I guess that's fine, you know, in an early stage on um, when you're innovating. But um, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about uh, or play um, for the Unix principles and uh, in the hope that we can find ways to do system administration even in cloudy days um, that leverage a little more the principles of Unix that we've come to like so much over the last uh, decades. Now, I actually prepared a live demo and this is a little bit of a problem. Um, I'm happy to talk to you without the live demo, but then I don't really have anything to say. Uh, do we know what the problem is with the uh, video? Because I tried this beforehand. Reboot. There we go. Okay, that's good. All right, so some of you may know me already uh, from in the system uh, automation domain. I spoke at uh, two th 2014 in Perth about uh, inventory management, um, sort of a tool that I developed where you parameterize all the knowledge about your hosts and then uh, um, you plug it into your system automation tool, whether that's Puppet, Ansible, or Salt. Those are the three that are currently supported, but they're also it's easy to write adapters. Um, my talk today is not about that, and development, by the way, has stalled, because nobody's paying me anymore. Um, but it works, so if you want to have a look, reclass.pensfullofunix.net. Um, but today I'll be talking about this idea that I sometimes call the SSH botnet. So imagine we have a couple of systems out there, whether they are in a data center or spread across different sites uh, worldwide, and uh, imagine you have persistent connections between the nodes, whatever the topology might be, spoke, bouncers, have a mesh or whatever, and now you run all your system and stuff over this botnet. Um, I started having this idea when I first met Salt, because I really liked that concept that you could just reach out to your nodes and do remote execution, and it would also do policy enforcement at the same time. And I was like, hey, yeah, you know, I mean, we know botnets from IRC and from everywhere else. Why not just, you know, turn the cracker tool botnet into the hacker tool botnet and use it for system admin uh, automation and administration. And, uh, and then looking around at uh, all the available tools, I found that, as a matter of fact, you know, Puppet has its own transport layer and its own CA and its own uh, TLS implementation. Salt has the same, which is, uh, I'm not going to comment on any of that right now. Um, Ansible at least uses SSH, but it's a, a very sort of ad hoc type thing. It doesn't have any uh, persistent connections. And I figured all of these tools could actually benefit very much from having such a botnet. One tool in true Unix fashion that focuses just on transport between all the nodes, that does that well, provides interfaces, and therefore becomes a good standing member of the Unix community or society. So without uh, trying to show uh, any form of a complete research project or anything. It looks fancy, but it's not. It's the OSI stack of system automation that I came up with yesterday, shortly after I found out that I was going to be talking today. <laughs> um, so we, we covered the lowest level inventory with reclass a little bit. Today I'm going to be focusing on transport. And I kind of picked out a couple of aspects of transport, um, which are authentication, encryption, topology, and resilience. And if you look at the landscape out there of the tools, then uh, you'll see that, you know, CF Engine, Puppet, Chef, Salt, they all implement their own authentication. They all implement their own encryption, or at least reused libraries. Um, 
Ansible does SSH, that's fair enough, but it also didn't only does the push mode and, and so on and so forth. I don't really want to go into too much detail on, these, uh, on this table right now. The message that I wanted to share is that we can do better than this. We can provide transport Unix style, do one thing well, and when we do it right, and this is what I'm about to show you, we can be topology independent. So we don't have to make the decision about whether I want to have a push mode infrastructure or a pull mode infrastructure. I can do both depending on what my nodes need. And then use that for monitoring, data collection, remote execution, policy enforcement. So the live demo I'm quickly going to show um, is basically this, you know, push and pull both in the same, um, with the same interfaces so that the idea being your monitoring tool or your policy enforcement tool uh, doesn't need to care anymore whether a node is being pinged or the node reaches into the client. Uh, the control uh, aspect of it or the interface here is the same for both and there's the agent on the other side that is the same for both. And uh, mind you, I whacked this up yesterday, so um, it's pretty rough. But uh, basically, it's a couple of shell scripts. I'm sorry for the, uh, I tried to make the font big enough, but uh, um, so you can't see it all. But basically, what I'm using is a tool called SoCat. How many of you know SoCat? That's very good. Because that is not, Netcat is not the true Swiss army knife of uh, networking. SoCat is, it can do a lot of things. Um, so I'm using SoCat in the agent, for instance. So if I start the agent for my LCA 2016A machine, then uh, basically it's just going to listen on a Unix socket. And here you can see the socket. And uh, I'm going to start this agent as well on the LCA 2016B machine, just so that we have two of them. So now we have two sockets in here, uh, local sockets, and the agent listening on them. And now we basically just need to connect um, these sockets to the master over here on the, on the left-hand side. And uh, I'm going to have the master reach out, in this case, to LCA 2016A. Reach out is a very, very simple shell script again. Um, it, it's actually quite nasty because of the way that SSH handles children after the connection goes down, so I had to add a PTY. Again, SOCAT allowed me to do that. All of this is going to be on, uh, on Git, so you don't have to copy it down or understand it right now. You can take your time to study it later. But uh, essentially, it creates the connection um, using auto-SSH. How many of you know auto-SSH? That's far fewer. Basically, the idea of auto-SSH to give a quick background, is that uh, it monitors your SSH connection, and when it goes down, it restarts it. So that now you suddenly have resilient SSH with a tool that already exists, which reuses SSH in true Unix fashion. So without further ado, let's reach out from the master to LCA 2016A. Now, this is all happening on localhost. I didn't actually use containers or anything. I just used user accounts, different ones. Um, so that's done. Um, and if we look into the, it's all also running from the same directory, just for the simplicity of things. And now we have a control socket and a, and a controlling terminal. And as a matter of fact, I can now um, connect to that control socket using netcat for a start. And you'll see over here that the agent now registered a connection, and it uh, exit its uh, handler, which uh, conveniently has been cat at the moment. So when I s write something in here, or hello, hello LCA, then uh, it's just going to be echoed back. So it's not rocket science at all. Um, I'm sure you've seen this uh, sort of ping pong many times before, but it is the first thing that you do when you start working on system automation. So that was reaching out to LCA 2016. Now imagine we have another couple of hosts that are behind a, a firewall and you can't reach them from the outside because IPv6 isn't there yet and, and all this kind of other stuff. Um, so, so we can configure this, these nodes to actually reach in to the master. And uh, this is all pretty hacky, I have to admit. But anyway, that's it. So now we have two controlling sockets and PTYs. And I can do exactly the same as I just did when I connected to the LCA 2016A socket. I can connect to the B socket. I can say, hello, LCA. And you see over here the cat handler has been spawned. And 
I get the Pong back and uh, Nifty, everything. That's all I'm going to show you today. Um, and it really isn't uh, very much rocket science. All of the hard stuff, the policy enforcement, all of the handlers and uh, stuff that makes changes on your system or that does the monitoring will have to be implemented unless it already exists and uh, can reuse a transport layer like this. I've spoken, for instance, to the Munin people, also Jamie of um, Prometheus is going to be talking later. Um, we stroke up the first conversation yesterday about just the possibility of swapping out the existing transport layers in these tools and putting something like this in. Now, this is all vaporware. I, I wrote it yesterday, these couple of shell scripts. It, it's really, I'm here to, to give an idea. but. Uh, and, and also to get feedback, because I hope that uh, either you guys are going to go home after this and say, like, yeah, you know, actually, let's return to the Unix principles and do system admin administration how it's supposed to be done, or that some of you are going to raise your hand now and say, you're such an idiot, this is absolute bollocks, and it doesn't work, because that's fine, too. Um, and with that, with that, I think uh, I'm done. I'm just going to share the... Um, the GitHub... What happened now? Oh, that'll do. Um, this, is, this is where I push the, the little bit of code that you can look at. It's really not uh, too fancy and not too complicated if you're interested in this. And uh, I should have a minute or two, four minutes left in case there are any questions. And otherwise, I don't feel bad about letting you guys go early to coffee break. Are there any questions? There's one back there. Yeah, so the question picked up on, on this being a master client um, architecture and whether it could be more mesh-based or swarm-based or peer-to-peer, uh, -peer. and uh, absolutely. Um, the, the question, of course, is always going to be, what do you want? Um, if I change my system descriptions and then expect that all of the systems that I control are going to have the same consistent state five minutes later, using a mesh network is, is probably not the right choice. In that case, I personally like master-slave approaches. But I realize also that sometimes you have time. You don't care if uh, you know, the convergence in your infrastructure happens within the next five minutes or can take a day. And then uh, I would, I've already thought about this a little bit, and there are peer-to-peer -peer, um, protocols out there that you can leverage and that can sit on top of this transport layer, or you just use Git, because essentially, that's what you need to do. You just need to make sure that um, whenever you find a new node uh, by service discovery, that uh, you make sure that that node knows what you know and that you know what that node knows, and uh, eventually everything is going to converge. So yes, definitely, it should, it should go that way too, and I think it's possible. But I, I put that even on a higher layer than just the mere transport between two nodes. Any other questions? All right, there's one. Joel? Uh, persistent SSH uh, connection is going to be scalable. Our persistent SSH connection is going to be scalable. Um, well, we talked about this at 1 o'clock uh, tonight. <laughs> 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 um, well, you have, you have uh, 65,000 ports, right? And uh, so you can, you can probably have a couple of thousand uh, SSH connections going at, at the same time. And when you don't use them, they don't really do much. So I think it's not going to be a resource problem. But it should also not be too much of a problem to have bouncers or something like that in place so that you, know, you reach out to one host and that host then con uh, controls another 1,000 hosts or something, something like that in that direction. Um, it, it hasn't been implemented. Uh, but uh, I, it just requires a multiplexer on the bouncer, and, and then it should be doable. What I'd like to do in this case, though, is um, make sure that on the on the controlling host, like, and, and this is going to be the host that you sit at as a sysadmin, that you still have sort of the, the controlling sockets for all of your hosts, even the ones that are behind the bouncer or in the mesh, because then you can use that for uh, remote execution and also to give you a sort of idea of which nodes are actually reachable. Like some of those tools out there, like Salt, for instance, doesn't have a concept of whether a node is down. Still tries to like sort of ping doesn't get any feedback, doesn't give you an error or anything, but uh, still tries to ping that node and do stuff. Whereas I'd really just like to know, not, not because I don't run Nagios or that is 
better done with Nagios, but right there, if I want to run a command on 10 hosts and I know one of them is not available because the control socket is not there, I, as a sysadmin, I'm going to have a better feeling, I think. So, but I think it's doable. Um, I was suggested to leave the stage, so. Uh, <laughs> so I uh, thank you for your attention and uh, have a nice coffee break.